Okay, welcome back. I'm sure you have smashed question one by now and got your five out of five, which for this section of the exam gets you grading. Okay, so well done if you've got those five out of five. Let's move on to question two. So question two in the pattern that the exam board often uses not always, can't guarantee it, but very often it's the impressions question. And it is here for your practice today. So if you read that question, the first instruction is to read paragraphs two and three. This is why highlighting can sometimes get in your way. So if you've underlined this first time and this next time you're looking for different information in the same paragraph, then uh, now is a good time to use a highlighter to go back into paragraph two, just to make it a little bit different, okay? If, if there isn't any crossover across the questions, I would ditch a highlighter altogether, but I know that lots and lots of you like highlighters, and I know that lots of my lovely colleagues in the department like highlighters too. So make your choice and see what's the best for you, okay? Um, so we're asked to read paragraphs two and three. So what we're gonna do this time, we go back, to the extract and we either draw a box around paragraphs two and three or we do the little bracket frames, top left hand of where paragraph two starts, bottom right hand of where paragraph three finishes so that we're not going to stray into any other parts of the extract. Perfect, do that now for me. Right, okay, so now question two asks us what impression are we given of Winston, his flat, and the things in his flat in these lines. So I know in the past weeks you've just been asked to find kind of one thing to look for in your impressions question. There isn't enough in here to just talk about Winston for the five marks. So it's Winston, the flat he lives in, and things in his flat. Okay, so you're also given some bullet points. Notice the word should. You should include. The exam board are advising you. They expect to find these things in there. Some of the marks are attached for finding these things in there. So make sure you address both bullet points. So you should include what the writer says about Winston. Well, that's your quotes, isn't it? His flat and the things in it. Okay, and the language that is used to create these impressions. So it's asking you to interact a little bit with how that language gave you an impression. And the way we structure our answers at Blackburn Central High School means that you will always hit that bullet point. If you've quoted and you followed my sentence stem, that we call it the formula back in class, don't we? Um, if you followed that sentence stem, you will smash both of those bullet points. Okay, so. There's some tips, they're the same tips more or less that I've given each week you've been doing these mini projects and it won't change next year when you're in year 11 and year 10, we'll still tell you the same thing because this is how you pass the exam. Okay, so it tells you to use five to seven different pieces of evidence. So I'm gonna go and look and do seven pieces of underlining if I can, okay? I'm gonna make sure that my evidence answers all bits of the question. So I'm gonna have a piece of evidence on Winston, at least one piece of evidence on him, at least one piece of evidence on his flat, at least one piece of evidence on the things in his flat. And then I'm gonna have more evidence about a couple more of those as well to get us uh, get, get us to five to seven, okay? Um, Try and have a look, make sure there's something that's towards the beginning, some evidence, in the middle-ish and some that's towards the end because we know that these examiners are looking for you to track the passage. So if you're clustered and bunched all up at the top, you're not going to be what is called thorough of that extract and that's what you want them to write after they've marked your answer, thorough, detailed, okay? Because then they can give you the big super duper four and five out of five marks. Okay, so let's, um give you some time now guys we usually spend 10 minutes on this five mark question and that's for the reading and the writing so divide that up if you think right i can probably write about five to seven pieces of evidence in five six seven minutes then i'm going to have to spend about three or four minutes on the reading so see how you get on do a time check three minutes and just see where you're up to on the underlining. If you need that extra minute to take you to four, then use the extra minute to take you to four. 
okay? If you desperately, desperately haven't got five pieces of evidence after four minutes, then use the fifth minute and then be ready to write up super, super, super fast, okay? Right, so three, four or five minutes to see how you get on, okay? And then I'll meet you on the other side and we'll go through.